Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 106 of the Peak of Serenity podcast. Uh, <laughs> getting up there, getting up there. Uh, one of the podcasts that I watched uh, had like episode number 357 this week, which is like, it's a lot of one podcasting. Day. One day. Um, we need a couple <laughs> more expansions for that. Uh, but I am, of course, Emilson in my just <sighs> Uh, and I'm joined by my co-host, as always, Anomaly. Hello. Hello. And uh, this week, actually, surprisingly, in some ways, a light week, or in a weird way, both a heavy week and a light week. We have a bunch of stuff, but not a lot of substance to any of it. It's true. Um, there's some new expansion. Wait, I like leaks. it, by the way. Yeah, we we got a new expansion leak that seems actually like real. Uh, that we're going to talk a little bit about, but all we really have is the name and some concept art. Uh, we have no more news about Season 4, which if you remember last week, we said we were going to hold off on talking about it until we had more details, except we have a little bit more from a Morgan Day interview, which is actually that interview with Morgan Day is going to be the main, I think, subject of today's episode. Yep. But before we get into that, how is your, uh, how is your progression going? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's going, you know, it's, uh, it's moving forward. I think, um, we, um, we, uh, we got down this week, uh, Desagne and Zymox. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, uh, we made some strat changes on all the sausage or Desagne, uh, yeah. in terms of the way we treated ring. So we, we did, we started out and I don't, I think I talked a little bit about this last week was we started out with the trying to jump two rings strat where like you hit yeah. one. And then everybody is like Night Fae, Venthyr, whatever it ends up being, or anybody with a port, the ability to jump two rings yeah. um, uh, whenever you get three or more. Um, that's not, we're not good at that as a guild, uh, just in general. Um, so basically we, uh, you know, our, our raid leaders sort of took the time and we basically adjusted all of our positioning. So we did the fight entirely different from a positioning perspective, but it allowed us to basically take one ring at a time. Yeah. Um, which healing was a little bit higher, but in general we live. Uh, which was nice. So we got the Sogne down in about an hour uh, on, I guess, Thursday, or Tuesday, I'm sorry, when we went in there. Um, one day this week. Um, and then went over to Zymox and, uh, and pulled Zymox for a little bit, got Zymox down in pretty epic fashion <laughs> in terms of, like, I think we, we stumbled our way into the final phase, so after the final set of, or the second set of ads, uh, with yeah. about, you know, probably 16, 17 people alive. Um, and killed the fight with three people alive. Uh, nice. nice. So uh, eventually got it down. That Zybox is actually a really fun fight. Um, I really like that fight. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. That was a. It was. It was a really. It was a blast progressing it. And um, yeah, it was. It was. It was quick enough that. I mean, it, I guess it, it. It's funny. It. It reminded me much of the Zymox from Castle because that Zymox also had a really bad inter, like over, set of overlaps about seventy five percent away through the fight. And once you got through that, as long as you had half your raid alive, like the fight good. eventually yeah. died. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Uh, but no, it was a it was a good it was a good set of uh, of prog days. And then we we got to we got to do Pantheon for a little bit. Um, really, just sort of testing out like a couple of week orders that we need to sort of nail down uh, in terms of like assigning folks to marks, and then yeah. Um, um, and yeah, just sort of look like working with the new mechanics. It doesn't seem too bad in terms of progression like that should be a quick like another maybe hour hour and a half worth of worth of pull time on it and we See get that. it down but i have stats let me go pull up what these oh. stats are for uh because i'm pretty sure uh you're underselling it unfortunately oh no T typical progression time actually you're probably not by that much if you spent like an hour then it is you know another hour and a half would be at the 75th percentile for for progression time um, it is 2.7 to 4.9 hours currently for like the 25th to 75th percentile of progression time on that boss. That's not so too it's, bad. A, it's like a solid raid night's worth of progression for a lot of guilds. Yeah, which is, um, which, which seems about, I mean, it seems about right for what we're doing. So, um, but yeah, it's, uh, Pantheon is, is Pantheon. I, I don't, the new mechanics are, I, I in general don't like Pantheon because I don't like healing NPCs. Yeah. Um, and that's what the seeds are. So um, that part I'm, sucks. But. I am looking forward to doing this fight on a prop paladin at some point because I've done it on heroic on a prop paladin. 
and you mm-hmm. can do disgusting things with the hand of the protector talent. It's just oh, the same yeah. thing as Kael'thas in Castle Nathria, where like early on in the fight, you just dump a log into something and it just heals for like 150k. Yeah, well, on yeah. heroic, I literally like full healed a uh, seed by pushing water awesome. on it, and it, it was not entirely expected. I was like, well, I I don't have anything else to do with this holy power. I might as well do that. And I was like, nice. Oh, oops, I definitely screwed up our seed timing, but it was yeah. okay because it was just heroic. But that that seems like something that would be would be fun to mess with on uh, on mythic farm. That's um, funny. That's funny. As far as our progression, like last week, we did get Dossane down. It was a complete mess. Uh, we weren't trying to do the double ring crossing like you guys were, but I hadn't. Our boss positioning didn't really reflect that, and I didn't realize it until I went back and looked after the fact. Our mm-hmm. boss positioning, I had based it on a guild that was doing the double ring crossing and i didn't realize there was one key part where i was moving the boss too far for people to really easily do the double ring cross, or the the single ring cross so yeah. we adjusted that we also adjusted how we bait there's like starting in phase two every set of rings has an obliteration arc happening during it pretty much um mm-hmm. so we adjusted how we're baiting that those to try and make it easier to dodge and like we spent and something on it last week jesus yeah uh and then two pulls on it this week <laughs> and that sounds great except that our second pull we killed it with a warlock in a seed and a enhancement shaman and that's it <laughs> nice nice we so just like those. we 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 got we got there but we lost like three people on the on the first set of rings in phase two, another four people on the first set of rings in phase three. And it is in that sense actually very much like uh Zymox from Castle Nathria, where like if you get through the the final shield, or the yeah. it's not technically the final shield, but the third shield, um with like half your raid alive, you'll kill it. Uh because you really yeah. only like we got there with like fourteen percent health on the boss. So you do the three percent of her health oh, you've melted damage, it, yeah and then the ten percent you know just melts away the problem is that immediately after we lost like seven of those people so we had three people doing like three percent of the boss's health oh jeez yeah so Great. there's a race to get before that before that next shield i actually think mm-hmm. we got the fourth shield for us okay um so yeah so we actually had to go through all four shields which was uh which wasn't too too bad but um but yeah definitely yeah. not what what we wanted to do that's for sure so yeah i mean there's there's a point where it's not like it's not net positive dps but it is like yeah. if you just focus on doing the mechanics by skipping the fourth shield you're actually having to do 10 percent more of the boss's health basically or seven percent more of the boss's health yeah so there's actually a pretty good incentive to just like do the mechanics. Then you get yeah. this extra free seven percent knocked off of the boss's health. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, but I, I guess so. Okay, so you got the Sogne down in epic fashion, and then how was you? Do you guys have Zymox down now? Yeah, we do. Uh, <laughs> last week we almost had it down. We had we did a little bit of like, oh man, it's after raid ends, but we just had a three percent wipe. We can't stop. You know. Yeah. So we did another one and we wiped it 3% again. Oh, that's, yeah. It was so think- brutal. Um, and actually, so last week, I think I had, on a personal level, had the worst week that I have played in raid in a very long time, sure. which contributed to us not getting the Zymox kill because there, there were a few wipes in there that were my fault. Um, yeah. There were a couple wipes in there to people not baiting traps. There were a couple wipes in there to be just not adjusting for traps being baited in bad spots. Uh, but we came in this week, uh, and we were all like ready to go. We played super well, and then we got the wrong rings for the portals we had put out because we pushed too fast. Oh. Our damage went up by enough that we ran in, like enough oh. that we were started running into this overlap where instead of doing the second set of phase three rings, he skips it and goes straight to phase four rings. But we still have the phase three portals set up, which is extremely difficult to do. It's possible. It's difficult, yeah. except that the portals then despawn after the fourth ring spawns. Oh, so you can't, wow. Like the, 
yeah the way yeah, that yeah. I, i'm pretty sure i see like the they thought this through and then implemented it wrong they're like we don't want portals to despawn while there are rings out we're gonna wait until all the rings are done and then we're gonna despawn the portals and then they went and implemented it as we're gonna wait until all the rings have spawned yeah and then we'll of, give yeah. you a new set of portals which just means that if you get that overlap you literally can't do it there's not a tank mechanic going on that could yoink people through the through the walls there's no portals out you know the only way you could do it is if everybody's night fave and and can cross not one but two rings in a row which is not really practical yeah uh, so we ended up actually uh hard committing to beating it by pressing bloodlust at the start of phase three yeah, start of phase three okay. um and just pushing it in time to get the new set of portals before that set of rings um which kind of sucks like they did such a good job on zymox in general making it so that these push timer overlaps don't happen and then this one this one yeah. overlap really messes you up uh so we lost like probably 45 minutes to that mess around uh, there god and and but once we got through that we we absolutely destroyed the boss it was great um oh, nice. it was great uh but the other thing we did this week so we have zero pulls on prototype pantheon right now we killed just saying at like the last pull of our friday raid night mm -hmm. but we did splits on friday oh really really i didn't have four piece our raid leader didn't have four piece we had two boomkins without four pieces and mm -hmm. the ability to funnel all of them. Oh, so nice. Okay. We were like, well, like we can take, we can either wait, we can either effectively like bet that we'll get enough of them just by pure luck, yeah. or we can just like kind of wait for them to get it from Creation Catalyst, or we can spend an extra hour of our raid night setting up to, to funnel them these tier pieces. Uh, yeah. I ended up just like yoloing into my tier piece uh, while we were setting up for that, so that was nice. One of our boomkins ended up being out of the country uh, last or uh, Friday night, so he didn't get funneled. But then we funneled uh, our raid leader, his four piece, and then another boomkin, their four piece. And yes. the guy that was out of the country, he's just gonna have to like I don't know, get lucky. Yeah, we're, exactly. We're not going into heroic again. That was like. We, the, we the final kind of decided, one. Yeah, we had decided we were going to basically continue doing heroic until people were done with their four pieces, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Um, and doing splits basically meant, well, if we do this this week, we spend a little bit more time this week, but then we don't, like, we don't do it at all next week. Yeah. Or after. So we don't, we don't have to worry about it anymore. And so that's what we did. It was a testament to the tuning mistake that is how powerful tier sets are, in my opinion. Like, Oh yeah, we wouldn't have bothered if tier sets were not as powerful as they are, but they are so powerful. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I think we only have three. We have three people left of our sheets, right? That don't have four piece. Um, hunter, enhancement shaman, and a shadow priest. We actually have I a don't... second. We have a second person because of the legendary thing. It doesn't have their tier four piece and like they have four pieces but they can't wear it and wear their legendary and wearing their second legendary is better than wearing four piece uh they're a wrestler oh, yeah shaman. so yeah so yeah that's uh yeah that's rough yeah i don't know i don't know if we're going into heroic i hope i hope we're done if anything we just kill like the heroic tier bosses and go from there because i think most everybody has heroic tier at least so yeah. um so but yeah nice we're, i mean so we're, we're done with heroic we're going into prototype pantheon tonight and we have a whole raid night to spend on it and i am hopeful that we do get the kill it's going to be that's awesome like it could go either way but it's not actually a very complicated fight and it's a lot of it is on the healers right like the healers do the seeds yeah. well and keep people alive through the winds and the dps just like don't get knocked off the platform by the animals and kill the, yeah. the necromancers and it kind of like kind of should die and I'm pretty confident in our healers. We've got some good healers. That's awesome. But that's uh, awesome. Yeah, it could it could definitely die tonight, or it could like be another like back to back three percent wipes. Get it next week <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. We um, 
we had every like we had a i think we have a, we tried five healing it actually which i don't know mm -hmm. if is the way we'll actually kill it um we That's might actually, actually we're planning on going in tonight um, five yeah did you run into any issues with that what what or is it just like damage things no i mean the the five healing felt comfortable but almost too comfortable so like okay. that was the like we never really saw the full ramp of damage particularly in p2 so yeah. like that's the one thing that i think we like right now going through p1 four healers is plenty um and then going into p2 at least for the first probably half of that phase four healers is fine but we yeah. that's where we sort of break apart after the first hand it sort of gets a little sketchy um yeah yeah they have, we have people, people miss like the lines yeah yeah the circles and stuff like that and soak lines and so um but no i, I think we're gonna actually try for healing it because i think the extra dps is probably at least in our rate a little bit better so okay well uh we'll see how it goes though so it goes yeah uh, um well cool well uh I, I guess that's that's progress review and i guess we can sort of pivot yeah. now to to like the last week so i would i want to start with actually the leaks and some of that yeah so i think that'll be it. like the, the the fun part to start with it so yeah so if you guys aren't aware um blizzard uh made a couple of updates to a couple of i will say like javascript files on their website and one of those updates actually points to having to um or indicates the next wow expansion will be named dragon flight dragon yeah dragon flight right yeah um and basically like the code itself is checking to see if you have if if one of the three Dragonflight editions are um like in the store is the way the code works. And the three editions are are typical. They're like standard, the middle tier, like heroic edition, and then like the epic edition, which is like the like all the extra stuff, right? Um, so that leaked. Um, but independently and actually before this came out, there was a screenshot posted too of what they're what they're saying is like the box art or like the the cinematic yeah. art for yeah. dragon blight which shows alex alex straza um you know in a in a new form and it's like of someone's desk with like it printed out posted on their wall so yeah the um classic the classic printing vendor leaks like magic the gathering or or exactly. Pokemon players will be familiar with this um there's also another one uh there's a uh they registered ssl certificates or dragonflight.blizzard.com um and i'm actually i've never tried doing this before because why would you but i don't know if you can register a ssl cert for a domain like a subdomain of a domain that you don't own like i have emelson.net yeah. could you register an ssl certificate for anomaly.emelson.net i don't know the answer to that I don't think you can because I think there's a at least if I like whenever you do like the let's encrypt stuff, which is like a free mm -hmm. like service to do SSL certs, there's like a there's like a challenge portion of creating the certificate. Right. Where we need to have to specific things the on site. the yeah. yeah, like on the web server, like expecting a specific response. Because yeah. I think if you went to that dragonblight.blizzard.com, it, it would probably 404 or wouldn't redirect anywhere if you right. hadn't set it up previously. So right. Um so yeah, so the yeah, the search for the other one. So yeah, so it looks, I mean. Everything points to Dragon Blight being the expansion name. Now, the interesting thing is that it's in the code on their website, so it could be an elaborate like misdirection that they're so doing. That's the other but... thing. April first was Friday. Yeah, this happened. Yeah, Friday. That's the, that's the only thing that gives me pause. That's, exactly. that's the only thing. Um, which I mean, I guess if the Blizzard team are if the wow team are putting on an elaborate april fools gag like they got us yeah, they got, they got us the good. community real good <laughs> real good yeah because i mean everybody's reporting that this is sort of the the next expansion of the new expansion name which is just yeah uh which is funny because i mean if it is a huge like just misdirect it's it's good on them they uh they got yeah. the community for sure so uh but i don't know so i mean I don't want to spend too much time speculating because there's a lot of stuff can happen and, and we don't really know the final outcome of, of most of this, but I will tell you that I'm extremely excited about this. Um, yeah. I primarily mean, dragon, because, sorry. The, the Dragon Isles expansion concept has been like a fan expansion concept literally since the Wrath of the Lich King era. That was like, you know, you would see MMO champion leaks, quote unquote, yeah. of the Dragon Isles expansion before Cataclysm came out and... And things like that and then oh, when yeah. stuff like nefarian being a 
on the box art for Cataclysm uh, was part of it. That was that was a big deal because like, oh my gosh, Dragon <laughs> Isles, no Dragon, yeah, um, yeah. But um, sorry. yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say so, and yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan. Like, I started playing WoW when dragons were the bad guys, right? Like, yeah, like uh, Nefarian and um, whatever. Like, what was the other one? Like, there was always like Ebon Rock and Flame Gore and Black um, and then Nixia uh, Blackwood and yeah, Nixia, yeah. yeah, yeah. All those guys were all those you know dragons were sort of the thing. That's still the like it's hilarious to this day. Like personally, like whenever I tell my wife I'm going to play games, she's like, "Are you are you killing dragons tonight?" And I was like. Yeah, like, cause that's the only thing that she remembers is like when I used to play, or when I still play. But when we when we played when we first met, it was always like I gotta go kill some dragons. Was always like my response yeah. to that. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm excited to get back there. We'll see like everything they talked. Like the funny thing too is there's a leak also, and I didn't want to really get too much into it, but there's a leak also from MMO Champion. Like when we were going through leak season at like the end of February, um, one of them actually na- is named Dragon Blight. And like it has like some crazy stuff inside of it about like what's upcoming. Yeah, um, st- I don't think that one is. I don't think it's is, real, but that one is too far afield. And if you want to name your Dragon Isles expansion, you know, there's only a few like really stellar names. Like Dragon yep. Flight is a good name for a dragon expansion. So oh, yeah. I I wouldn't put too much on that. I didn't have any other. We don't have any other details for the expansion all we've got is the name some box art alex Straza's involved that's it that's all we got yeah we're going yeah, on and it look- this being real right now but which uh we don't have to wait too long like what is it april 16th 19th. is or 19th, 19th sorry yeah so that is april let me let me pull up the, the like two weeks ago calendar. two weeks away right that is tuesday so we have this coming tuesday two weeks from then so we're gonna have this coming tuesday the week after that creation catalyst comes out the week after that expansion announcement exciting times it'll be good it'll be good i'll get to start getting tier sets on my alts that i'll never play but uh it'll be fun i started doing (laughs) started doing like a weekly key on my dk just to start progressing the uh ye old tier set Nice. I've got, I've been clearing the raid on my paladin. Oh, nice! On on at least normal, like normal, a little bit of heroic. I have two yeah. piece, both from my vault. Zero pieces dropped for me from raid. Still two piece. Like <laughs> I feel like this is like a that's the more casual raiders experience right now. Is like oh yeah, I've still yeah. just got two piece. Exactly. Or maybe I've got exactly. a third piece, but I can't use it yet. Yeah, that's that's for sure. That's for sure. So yeah, so um. So yeah, new new expansion. Only a couple more weeks. We'll have to see if Dragon Blight or Dragon Flight. I'm sorry, I always just say Dragon Blight, but Dragon Flight is the real name, and we'll see what they do. Is it really Dragon Isles? Is it just reashed old old zones? Do we oh. finally get a Tinkerer class? So let's see. Let's we'll see. find <laughs> out in a couple of weeks. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Um, all right. Well, then moving on. A couple of quick hits here um so legion uh the mage tower legion mage tower now permanently open so that opened with reset so you can yeah. go in to your heart's content start gathering you know doing um some of those runs it's funny i actually forgot about this until this weekend and i was uh talking to somebody um and i was like what are you like just like hey what are you up to you want to do a couple keys they're like oh like no we're um or like i'm like grinding he's like he's like i'm grinding mage tower and i'm like it's not legion time walking is it he's like no it's open all the time now i was like Oh right, right. So, um, yeah. so yeah, base shower open. Forgot about it, but you want to go in there and do it? Hey, it's uh, it's there. It's fun. I have not yeah. gone back in yet, but it's one of those things. It's pretty nice actually that it's just open because like I'm busy oh, yeah. right now. I don't really want to take the time to go and try and knock out a couple more mage tower skins. But like I can go in a few weeks do it oh yeah because i haven't finished like i i would like to go back in and get it on my dk i would like to go and get it on a couple other characters um and i don't have to worry about it you know i, I can go back in later always there it's always there just waiting just yeah. waiting um cool and then uh so that's really the only thing that happened this week i'd say on re well at least in terms of like updates to, to retail 
Um, they did, so Blizzard has posted a couple more things on 9.2.5, so basically the yep. Season 4 patch. Um, so one thing, and actually we're going to take this in reverse order, but they put up a poll. Um, I think we talked about this a little bit. They put up a poll for two, basically what they're adding to Mythic Plus, it sounds like, is two dungeons from each of the past three expansions, um, plus the Tazavest dungeons from this expansion to the Mythic Plus pool. So you get the large ones, so you get Tazavesh split in two, Mechagon split in two from um, BFA, and then you'll get Karazhan split in two from Legion. Um, and then from WAD, they basically put up a poll uh, yep. for what two dungeons you wanted to do. And that poll is now closed. If you didn't vote, we're sorry. However, um, Grimrill, Depot, and Iron Docks won, which In is... both EU and NA. Which is which hilarious. Is... Pe- yeah. It's, it's funny that both regions voted for the same two. Yeah. Uh, uh, disappointed that Ubers is not in there. Would have rather had Ubers than Grimrill Depot, to be honest. What's that? one uh it's a tough one to black rock spire yeah yeah it's a, i don't know i so i love grim rail depot actually okay okay weirdly enough that, that was that's what i voted for um for that but um but yeah so those will be the it sounds like those will be the, at least the two dungeons that get added there'll be mythic plus versions of those two dungeons which um which will be interesting because yeah I'd say a lot of people do not enjoy grim rail there's a lot more vocal disdain for that dungeon than there yeah. is like praise of it um i like it per, you know primarily just because of the tech behind it like the way they actually built a dungeon that looks like you're on a moving train i think is really cool yeah um but um but yeah so it'll be it'll be uh it'll be interesting to see what season four mythic plus looks like is it just going to be these sort of eight dungeons now or is there yeah. other ones like is it all the so, all the current shadowland stuff oh. a lot that we don't know about it um yeah. we do know so they did one of the things um, with both Maw of Souls being a part of Legion Time Walking and then Grim Rail, Grim Rail Depot winning the vote for WAD uh, to be part of Season 4 Mythic Plus and Shadowlands, there was concern about accessibility because of motion sickness. So it wasn't as bad, I don't think, on uh, Maw of Souls, but there was the moving background with like you're on a, si- you're on a, a, a ship and so people would get motion sick on that. Grimrail Depot is actually really bad about it for a lot of people because it looks like you're on a moving train, but you're not actually moving. And I know, like, my sister is as just, like, awful motion sickness in that kind of scenario yeah. where it, it looks like you're moving, but you're not actually moving. Um, so both of those, they actually came out and posted a video, which is pretty neat, of they're mm-hmm. adding a uh a little vendor to each of them that you can just buy it's like a copper uh buy an item from them that turns off the moving background i don't know if it's permanent yep. or a toggle or if you have to do it every time or if you can like buy a bunch and just have them in your bags and up one when you start the key but no moving backgrounds uh they are optional now um so that is i think actually pretty yeah, and it's and the the buff is, or the the way it works, it's only for you. So you're the only one. Yeah. Like the rest of your party can have the background moving; they'll see it moving. Uh, but you, um, if you do get sort of motion sickness from it, will um, will uh, will not see it moving, which is awesome. So, um, so that's cool. Um, that's it. That'll be in the nine point two point five update. And then also they did post a couple of updates coming in. Um, some PVP changes, a new PVP arena is coming in. And then yep. there'll be some new transmogs and mounts for Blood Elves and Dark Iron Dwarves. Yep. So all of that sort of coming into, into play here. So um, yeah, well, PTR slowly gaining features and, and updates. Um, no class changes yet, nothing like that. So yeah. um, we'll see how there, 902 fleshes out. We do have a couple of hot fixes for the live game from the past week. That's or, true. Some of them are, are coming up, going to happen on Tuesday. Uh, big rip in advance for the guardian druids in chat there may be zero yes. but uh big sad for those people um a couple things so halandris got nerfs uh across actually all difficulties they nerfed his health by 10 percent again yep. question mark on on mythic. mythic uh they nerfed heroic the the ephemeral moats there's fewer of them on heroic in the in the final phase they move slower in all phases and then on Mythic, they changed the uh, hot potato bombs so that mm-hmm. they don't explode 
if you kick an orb with them or hit them with a tank beam. That was, you know, one of the things that caused these to, you know, like this to be such a wipe heavy boss is that there were so many ways to accidentally detonate one of these bombs and yep. you you just instantly die. You're, the raid's dead when that happens. So removing a couple of ways for that to be uh, accidentally detonated is just kind of nice. Like, you're still right. going to kill someone if you hit them with a light shatter beam, but if they drop the bomb and they move out of the beam, you know, nobody's got to, gotta, you know, go save Private Hot Potato. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they've also made a, a handful of other changes to a bunch of the other bosses um, coming in. So, like, they've reduced... Um, they made a, a lot of heroic changes to Desogne, um, you know, health reductions, vulnerability reductions, things like that. Um, one of the big ones for some of the later fights, uh, Lords of Dread. Um, now they're when they were in dark, Storm of Darkness or Storm of Decay, um, they used to take 100% additional damage from AOE attacks, which is why you saw you know Method and uh, really like all the top guilds from a world first perspective stack like Hunters and other melee uh, for that. Um, but uh, so they they basically changed that to now just a hundred percent of all damage taken. That way, yeah. you don't need to stack sort of AOE heavy classes. Um, you could always, um, you could always just, you just always stack your basically your highest DPS classes. Um, yeah, the, and this so also should be able to make the damage check. This also helps paper over some things where like things you think are AOE abilities didn't count because what they did is they applied a single target effect in AOE. Yeah. Um, so like for Brewmaster, Keck Smash counts. The initial damage on Breath of Fire counts, but the dot from Breath of Fire does not count. Um, because the dot is oh, a yeah. target, but even though you're applying it in AOE and the bulk of the damage comes from the dot, you know, you're not actually getting AOE damage bonus from it. Um, and so this just, like, it makes it more consistent. It means that you're not going to see most guilds running, like, five survival hunters on this boss yeah. on Mythic, uh, which is yeah. good, because most guilds can't. Um, but, you know, that doesn't change the, like, you might still see, see people run a couple of survival hunters on this because they're just good at AOE. Right. Right. So yeah, so lots of uh lots of fun updates there. They they did I this week there was a couple of funny bugs. I don't know if you ran into this with your raid. Um there was one on Anduin with the phase three mythic Anduin in this case, the phase three, the shooting stars had a little bit of a yeah. difficulty tracking everywhere. So basically the bug was that they, they would, would like basically go shoot out, out and they would spin just spin around in a circle. They'd go out yeah. maybe like 10, 15 yards they would from go, like, and to then the stop. center of the platform and just spin. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was a so, neat clip. So there was a couple of those. You, you might have saw that from Liquid. Um, and then actually, Vigilant Guardian had a huge issue, at least for us, on Tuesday with the orbs, where um, only about like only a handful of folks in your raid could pick up the orbs from Vigilant Guardian and use them on the yeah. boss. Um, so we ran into that where we actually wiped, I think, once to that boss because one of the orbs no one ever picked up, no one realized, and then um yeah we couldn't interact like what the person who typically does it had picked it up and dunked it but then the orb slowly exited the boss and went back to its position <laughs> like he never dunked it so we were like i don't understand what's going on um so yeah it was a uh, a couple of those sort of things we we found this week they fixed hopefully all that i don't know if you saw any of that on on um on friday but uh but for us that was really the it i think um in terms of weird stuff so no real major, we, I'd say, like, I think the Lords of Dread is, like, the largest sort of change you'll see, yeah. um, along with some of the Holandris nerfs. Those two bosses, I think, got hit the hardest this week. Yeah. Um, oh, and actually, the one thing we didn't talk about, um, Pantheon. So, and you'll see this. So, Pantheon, yeah. they changed the, um, the retreat percentage. So, typically, before the Pantheon, you, you fight two at a time, they would retreat at 50% health. Um, and then you get the next two for phase two, and then those also would retreat at 50% health, and you'd fight both from 50% to zero, or all four from 50% to zero. They've changed that to now trigger at 40% health, um, which, has a, which basically makes phase one and two slightly harder, because now you'll have an additional probably... Uh, actually, you probably well, can't... Like, there's a the second change, second change that goes with this. So is important for context. All the boss's health is reduced by 10%. Oh, yeah, sorry. Was that across all difficulties? I don't know. I know it's at least mythic. Okay. It's probably all difficulties. Yeah. Um but the that means so basically the damage check in phase 1 I 
I only did the math. I think it's 8% harder or something like that in phase one to beat mm-hmm. the DPS check. Uh, phase one and phase two to beat the DPS check to skip the second set of you know, whatever you're trying. Uh, yeah. But then in phase three, the DPS check is like 26% easier. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it makes phase three easier. Phase one and phase two are slightly harder. It kind of moves the difficulty around, but it does kind of put you in this situation where once you get to phase three, you know, you make it through the seeds, you make it through the winds, you make it through the night hunters, uh, you're going to kill the boss. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is cool. But, um, but yeah, the, I guess, yeah, tons of, I, I rescind my statement. There was a lot more changes this week. I'll say than than off the, off the, off the first uh, look. Um, I don't I don't see this on our on our notes, but uh well maybe it's hidden in one of these hotfix but uh ones, but another change to Lords of Dread. The pieces we core is broken now. Oh, I didn't yeah, I didn't put that in the notes, but yeah, they pieces had the what the auto weak aura to like auto target. Yeah. Um or auto tell you who the who the imposters were, and yeah, that broke. Yeah, we ran into that on Tuesday. We just we chalked it up to either not everybody having it or it actually breaking, so we just did it normally. But um, but yeah, yeah, they they officially broke that. So yeah. everybody who donated to charity to get it, I mean, they off. still did a good thing. But uh, I, I don't think anybody's surprised to see that fix. They completely removed one yeah. of the like big new mechanics from the boss. Yeah, it's exactly. Still, like you still basically need a weak aura to do it with any substantial rate size like the timer is just short enough that you just need a weak order to do it um yeah. so we use the voting one like there's a macro you get and you you target the person you hit your macro and it, or there's technically a button that it pops up to but the button doesn't work for me so and again <laughs> i never get picked to do it because i'm not a, i'm a tank i guess yeah, tanks yeah. aren't allowed to have fun i don't know nope. why that one doesn't target tanks but it doesn't um that's funny yeah so yeah so that that is now broken yeah it makes that fight eh, it's i mean i'd say that phase isn't too bad even yeah. i mean I'm, by the time you get to mythic you can probably do it on mythic without any macro just sort of calling names and, and yeah. typically it should be okay so yeah it's when you start getting closer to 30 people and you have 30 people oh, trying yeah. to call who they're on it is like okay guys like one person at a time please yeah exactly yeah yeah or you get the one person in your raid who just says the same names over and over again you're like yeah by the third time we heard you like we we understand yep. who you think yes. is the imposter. <laughs> yes. Um, cool. And then I guess final hot fix thing sort of topic here. Um, they posted the April 5th. So what's going to come up with this reset coming up on Tuesday? Um, it's really a tier set sort of set of hot fixes. So pretty much every D it's a other than the guardian druid, which uh, got nerfed slightly more. Um, <laughs> the uh the rest of the classes it's all dps classes really and so you'll see like fire mage buffs windwalker buffs from a monk perspective um paladin or ner or buffs i think too um yep. and yeah so sort of sort of damage ups really across the board um for everybody um so trying to bring some of those lower represented classes up which is cool yeah it's um, uh, so the Windwalker buffs obviously most relevant to us being a technically monk podcast. Um, yep. This, from what Babs was telling me, is about a four percent single target DPS gain. So this is Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, Tiger Palm, and Fist of the White Tiger damage increased by ten percent. Um, none of these, of course, are AOE abilities, so it's all just pure single target damage increase. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if four percent is enough to really make them compelling in single target, but it certainly makes them better. Yeah, exactly exactly um, and of course party druids uh <laughs> the single target damage that you get from this tier set for guardian druids is not that great they're like pretty solid like upper middle of the pack right now with their four piece they're going to yep. be now lower middle of the pack with their four piece on single target this the their four piece died for the sins of mythic plus like being able to do and it's not even like high keys mythic plus things like i mean technically it was also high keys but relatively high keys plus things yeah. like you you pressed incarn with ursox fury remembered or whatever it is and um just did like 150k damage it's honestly it died for the sins of those those clips of people doing that more so than a, an actual like problem because yeah. you had to have incarn up or incarn's a three minute cd or actually i take that back it died for the sins of ex- of the fairies 
It's true. Having having the cooldown reduction from Ur and from a Holy Priest meant that you could incarn like every or every other pull. It's pretty good. That's that's why they nerfed this. Which sucks because most people that are playing Guardian don't have a pocket Holy Priest to feed them fairies. And yeah. that like there's another a number of things like that where like they nerfed demonology warlocks, but demonology warlocks in many ways are doing as well as they are because of how powerful they are with external buffs. Yeah, with like yeah. PI being the the main one. Yeah. Yeah. Where like they're obviously still very good without external buffs, but they are substantially better because of how the class works with external buffs. And so mm -hmm. like just stuff getting nerfed that affects people that don't have external buffs because they are so much better with external buffs kind of feels bad. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's for sure. So I mean well, I guess, you know, if your class got buffed, congratulations. Um if not, you know, not, sorry. You're probably yeah. already good. Um, but now the monk buffs will be good. Yeah. Um, a little no bit stronger. Brewmaster's so. tier set fix yet. Fingers, Still I, I saw the hotfix like, updates. I was like, oh, monk is on there. Let's see. No. no. Yeah, I, just, it's, I, don't think we, I don't think we lost our Brewmaster this week to any tier set shenanigans. But uh, I, I got my four piece done, and the first thing I did is make a weak aura that tells me when the buff is about to expire, so I know I have to push Keg Smash right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're dead, basically. Yeah. yeah. yeah I he almost was, uh... lied to it multiple times on, on Zymox this week. Yeah. Oh, really? Not pleasant. Yeah. That, that muscle memory. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, before we talk about the Morgan Day interview, I did want to spend a little bit of time just to wrap up the race for world first, because last podcast, we <laughs> literally did before. our podcast on Saturday before the race ended. Um, and I think, yeah, Echo had Echo killed the boss. Killed it, and then I uploaded the podcast, too. It's like, I have a note in the podcast on the site where, like, this is perhaps the worst timing for us recording this yes. podcast we have ever had, because we recorded the podcast... We're like, it looks like Echo's probably going to get it, but I don't know, man. Maybe that phase four is yes. like harder than we think. And they got it. And then we uploaded the podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, congratulations to Echo on the kill. I mean, to, to be fair, they are, and we'll talk about, I guess we can jump right into it, but, um, you know, they, they killed it days before the next killed. So like, yeah. the, um, which is, which is crazy because um, they were, they were just on a, on another level, I think, going through Jailer. Um, I watched. So I actually watched the the kill itself, and the pulls yeah. even before the kill were just like low percentage wipes. Like, yeah, literally they, was like just they played out of their minds. It was great. Yeah, yeah, and no, they played really well. So that's off to them. Um, and yeah, I think from there we actually a couple things happened. So one thing, um, which was interesting was like Liquid essentially flew home and took. So this was on a Saturday, and they basically took all of Saturday and Sunday off. And Liquid didn't raid again until Monday, um, at all. Yeah. Um, they actually didn't and, uh, raid again until Monday evening because of internet issues. Yeah. yeah. So, which was, uh, which was, I think, the right call for them. I Max, I, went, I don't think yeah. we're going to talk about it here, but Max gave like a big recap of, of like a Q&A from, from the race and everything like that. But from a Liquid perspective, like their viewpoint, and this is what Max says, like it's either your first or it's nothing. Right? Like they're not playing for second place. Like if they don't get first, it doesn't matter what place they get the rest of the way. Right? Like, top yeah. five top 10 for them it's just you know they they basically do everything to get first so um so he was like when we knew liquid or we knew echo was close they're like we just made the decision we're just going to fly home we're not going to change our flights for the fourth time the team is like mentally just burned out like to a crisp yeah. and you could tell like their their thursday and friday polls were just atrocious they, like they're they just... went a solid 100 polls without getting a new best yeah and yeah, so they, and it can be slightly misleading to say that in some cases because like sometimes you make progress without actually getting the boss's health lower. You know, you figure out yeah. a new way to deal with the mechanic that's better and easier, and it sets you up for success later. And that doesn't always translate into an immediate like reduction in the boss HP. Right. It, in this case, I do think it was accurate to say that they went a hundred pulls without the new best. Uh, they just yeah. like got stuck. They hit a. They hit a brick wall uh mentally i think yeah and yeah 
there there are some people that had an unbelievably shit take that like liquid shouldn't have done this they should have like powered through it and everything like no no that not there like and i think i feel like people don't realize that like this number one is the longest race ever right like the longest race i think in years that before the first kill so it went three full weeks right but then also liquid got to their venue a week before right which in in any other race is a great thing right because like typically yeah. they said like they get the they get to the venue like a day or two before they do like one day of media and then like then they get ready to raid so there's not a ton of time to do everything but like this time they got there a week early got acclimated um but at that point they'd been away from home for a month basically <laughs> like uh and doing this like 16 hours a day like i think i think max made the point of like if this was a typical race that ended like over the weekend of the second reset right like went like 10 yeah. 12 days they're like we probably would have stayed finished it out and flew home reset day like you know the tuesday coming up but he's like we were just we we're not rescheduling like nobody wanted to reschedule their flights for like the fourth time <laughs> Right. Uh, um, and I don't, to, I don't to do blame it. them. Like, I haven't Not watched it. Max, Max posted a, a Q&A video on YouTube. I haven't, I haven't gone and watched it yet. He probably, it's probably like a stream recap kind of video. I haven't, I yeah. haven't seen that yet. But, like, I saw his initial, like, announcement of it. And you could, you could just tell. Like, they were, they were right. tired. They were burnt out. And, like, it, they made the right call absolutely yeah. made the right call yeah yeah no yeah just for for their group and for their team like there's yeah there's no point in staying at that point you're not making progress like nobody's happy and like i think keeping everybody there just probably breaks that breaks like the like breaks the team aspect even more right then yeah um there, being able to go home and you can't you can't speaking from personal experience you cannot yeah. actually just push through burnout <laughs> If you're yeah, burned no. out, the absolute worst thing you can do is keep going. Like, there's yeah. literally nothing worse than doing that. You you got to stop and take a break. And they have to think not just about this race. They have to think about, well, there's this Season 4 announcement that happened. Are we going to have another race this expansion? Is that exactly. going to be a real thing? Or is it going to be not a real thing? And then, of course, they have to think about 10.0, where there will be a real race. And they want to not have their raiders burn out and quit the game because they've got some very good players like replacing those people is very hard you know? oh yeah so oh yeah 100 percent. so um yeah so i mean hats off to hats off to echo for doing that um the rest of the top five just so we'll quickly go through it so you had echo at one you had method number two a surprise method which to be fair it will be interesting to see going to the next expansion if method continues there because like I'm not the biggest fan. Like if you yeah. guys look at my Twitter feed from like two years ago when Method broke down, I'm not the biggest fan of Method. I will commend Scott or Sco for like keeping it together and rebuilding with like new organization, new people, new group. Hopefully not the same sort of mentality there, but yeah. same sort of type of people. But I mean, hats off to them for finish second. I mean, you gotta like Scott's a he's a warrior, I guess both literally and figuratively for <laughs> basically rebuilding for the entire, like this is the second method rebuild, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they, they broke apart he when Serenity left. Yeah. Now loves this game. So hats off to him. Um, third was Skyline, uh, which I believe is a Chinese guild. That is a Chinese um, team. Yes. Yep. Uh, which is surprising for them. That's, I think their highest ranking ever and, and good for the region. Um, and then SK pieces, of course, pieces, yeah. boys and girls got fourth and then liquid fifth. Um, and uh and yeah i think at that, that, that so those are the top five i think the couple other guilds have killed it since then but yeah i think um, aster killed it aster i know killed it be actually because uh that's another chinese team it's a it's a team that we so warcraft log side here um yep. we are of course also helping teams when they have issues with their logs you know their log uploader breaks or something uh-huh aster had so many so many issues i don't know oh really i don't know what's going on on their side like we didn't have that kind of issues with any other team but like they they got the kill but we weren't showing it as them having killed it because they didn't upload a log like we pulled our and there's no chinese armory for us to pull from so there's just like no way for us to know but they posted on twitter that they had killed yeah. it and like six hours later warcraft logs wasn't showing it because they hadn't actually uploaded the kill and <laughs> It was oh man. It was a mess. 
Oh man, um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, at least for now, race over. Well, I'll race over for you know, and then maybe not over for everybody, but the the yeah. top teams are, are sort of are done. And I mean, it it'd be interesting to see if we get like, I mean, method being good, two guilds in the EU with that sort of with that sort of pull will be interesting, right? Because like yeah. method's got sort of that that very old school, been around forever type. Wow, like that name in in World of Warcraft, right? And then you have Echo just the top team so it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of months going into 10.0 um, i do think that like if liquid hadn't just hardcore burned out they obviously would have gotten second they were far ahead of method for a lot of their progression and they yep. just hit that brick wall and stopped progressing and you know method overtook them while they were you know doing their flight home and testing um but Method was still two, three days behind Echo's kill. Two days. Oh, yeah. Echo's kill. Um, that's a large gap. That's the largest gap between first and second kill in a while. Like, the only one that's maybe been... No, because, like, there was the Jaina kill where, like, uh, Method killed it on a Monday, and then the next day Limit came in and did their reclear and, and killed it. And that's yeah. that's how it was, again, in... in um, sanctum and then in castle nathria they both killed it the same week so right um like that this is the largest gap between first and second kill like it, it, you know only two days but two days is a long time it's a huge amount of progress yeah huge amount of time to progress so yeah no it's um it uh i mean yeah i think you can't commend echo enough from for the push and i think they really i mean to be fair they sort of started to turn it around i think with rigalon and lords of dread right yeah um, yeah. Which is where, like, that's where they sort of set themselves up to be, to, like, catch up, be neck and neck with with Liquid and um, push together into to Jailer, so. Yeah. yeah. Man, I have nothing to watch on Twitch. Race is over. I guess we just have to watch <laughs> the podcast, huh? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's the only other thing I have in the background is, uh, as we're doing stuff, so. Um... Um, so there is, there was a Morgan Day interview as well, which I actually, like, heard it talked about before i actually found out where it was oh nice <laughs> so i just actually found where it was this morning uh there is now a post on well up with some of the what the the highlights which you know great segue here some of which are about the length of the race yeah the impact that that had on people um and stuff like splits you know and they actually admitted that the change to the trading rules for tier pieces was intended to try to make those splits less attractive for the world yeah um and that's i think the first time that they've ever really admitted to that like it wasn't for regular raiders trying to make sure you you know little timmy doesn't have to trade away his four piece bonus to the raid leader or whatever it was right. for the world first race um and of course they did the splits anyway they did even yeah. more splits um and not only that well, but like the way that they split up the tier Actually, they felt, you know, maybe contributed to the splits because you actually couldn't get four piece the first week. Like the guilds right. couldn't finish their splits during heroic week or get most of the way through their splits on heroic week. They had to actually wait to a ton of them during mythic week, which contributed to, you know, that's just an extra two days that they basically didn't progress mythic, uh, which was both a bad viewing experience, a bad experience for the raiders themselves, just like, you know, not a great experience for anybody at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Morgan mentions that he's like, yeah, he's like, we came in like on Tuesday morning, like all ready to like turn on the streams and be like, cool. Like how far are they going to get in mythic? And he's like, we just watched splits for 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. He's like, we were not expecting that at all. I don't think anybody was, um, but he's like, he's like in hindsight, like we realized that like, I think this is one thing you, you mentioned that like the, the loot rules themselves were specifically targeted at the world first race and splits. But I think Morgan also, maybe him and the team are like, we're never going to stop them from doing degenerate things. I don't think he yeah. comes out and says that exactly in the interview, but yeah, it's he, sort of, you get the very heavily implied. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's like, there's really nothing we can do. They're always figure out a way to like funnel loot. And he's like, nowadays he's like, it's interesting. He does have one interesting point. He's like nowadays or, back before really the streaming and things like that splits were all about how many characters you could have right they still are but the yeah. idea would be is like one player would have to have seven eight nine characters right now they and have nowadays numbers. with 
nowadays with the helpers, like they just need a larger community. So like, while there's probably less of a burden on individual world first players from maintaining multiple characters, there's still a huge like reliance on like the community to like do this. And like the splits become an almost more degenerate than they would be. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So yeah. So, um, but yeah, that was, that was an interesting part of the interview where they talked about that, uh, that yeah. sort of trading restrictions and loot rules. And I think, um, and I'll sort of, cause I watched the max and I know you didn't, but we'll pull in some stuff from max. So as we talk about this, but max's point too, is like max basically said, I'm done talking about loot. He's like, Blizzard is not going to change it. It's been two expansions. He's like, you literally just live with the systems you give us, right? Like, we're not going to, like, we've set our piece from, like, a world-first perspective. People have made, you know, posts and feedback on it all over the board. Blizzard's pretty set in their way, so we sort of just play what we're given with, right, at this point, so. I mean, at the um, same time, they took feedback from how, how domination sets work for this tier. We actually saw two things that they did for it, for this tier, that I think are based directly on how domination sets went and the feedback from domination sets. So the first thing is guaranteed tier piece drops. You're guaranteed yeah. to get two tier pieces from every tier boss, just, you know, with 20 people, guaranteed two tier pieces, which goes a long way towards limiting the variance of like, oh, you kill, you know, Remnant and nobody gets a tier helm. Right, right. That sucks. Um, or, you know... The other thing that they did is that they added creation catalyst, which is obviously right. not out yet. And I think the timing on that was a mistake. Personally, I think the timing on that was just a mistake. When my guild that is world 500 has decided that it makes sense for us to spend an hour of our raid night doing splits to get people their four pieces rather than wait an additional two weeks for those people to get their four pieces. That means that they messed up the tuning on right. when that comes out. If Creation Catalyst had come out this week, we wouldn't have even considered it. Like We would just finish our, our four pieces and move on with our lives. Right. Um, but it is there, and what that does is it cuts off this long tail of the distribution that he refers to in the interview of people that just didn't, didn't get their pieces. And we right. had raiders that were, you know, you know, a couple months into, um, into Sanctum that didn't have their stuff yet. That well, maybe a couple months is extreme, but you know yeah. what I mean. That that didn't have it, and we're like, I I don't even know why. Like, how like, should I just quit the game? Like, I can't compete. And there's a third piece of this that he alludes to a little bit, but I do you think is an important piece of it of they just these two these things are still too powerful like yeah the 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 bonuses are too powerful and when when it's a 30 percent dps gain to get your four piece you know not having it is just feeling like you're not playing the game yeah and that's i mean that's when splits become a thing right when the yeah when the power is that great but then it's such a and i i i get yeah he kind of says this but there's also such a like a um like a fine line to, to to draw there because you don't want them to turn into like what individual gems were which were essentially useless right yeah. like from a sanctum domination perspective um but yeah and you don't want to overtune it where like you have to have it to compete um so i think there's like that fine line of like hey this feels good to equip four piece but i'm not overshadowing yeah. everybody else versus yeah hey it doesn't matter if i have four piece or not it's just like great i get an extra couple yeah. item level i do an extra couple of random damage you know what i mean I, I do think that this tier was better than domination sets because of yeah. the two piece like two piece bonuses for a lot of classes are actually pretty good there's some where the two piece is actually better than the four piece um uh -huh. like we have like demon hunter havoc demon hunter is like that we have someone that they couldn't equip four piece with double legendary yet because of the tier pieces that they got uh with every legendary there's a one legendary that they run on like one fight that they actually just took they took off four piece they wore their two piece and their their legendary for that fight and it was fine um yeah. like having the two pieces be good on their own makes it feel way less bad when you don't get a four piece but then when the four piece is such a high power gain you reintroduce that bad feeling like the new baseline is having two piece right so yeah exactly exactly so 
No, it was um yeah, I mean the the those two loot rules I think were good. I, I just think that sorry, my comment was more about I think we'll always yeah. not oh we'll always have personal loot at least, but the, it yeah. sounds like they're making some changes to make some of that yeah. slightly better, right? Yeah, and I mean I I, um, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent with this, but as long as personal loot is in the game and not like significantly neutered as compared to if they reintroduce master loot, um the world first race will use personal loot because yeah. you can manipulate it they've developed ways to manipulate personal loot that are well beyond what you can accomplish exactly so so yeah yeah um well cool i don't know was there any other questions you've gotten to because i have a couple of sections i wanted to sort of touch on let's go with you because i've only okay. that's about as far as in the in the interview as i got which i guess for for anybody that is curious, the interview is up on the Realm Maintenance podcast. This is like Warcraft Radio, well maintenance, Realm Maintenance, like that podcast. Yep. Uh, there's a YouTube video that's linked from Wowhead. I will also have it in show notes for this episode. So if you're listening to this on like iTunes, you can click it there. Or if you're on that, uh, definitely would recommend listening through it rather than just reading the highlights from Wowhead, like the highlights are good and they're important, but there's a lot of extra detail in right. Morgan Day's actual answer. Um, yeah. Side note, I just realized it's kind of weird that I always say Morgan Day. His full name. Yeah. Is <laughs> I don't, like, I'm not on a first name basis with him, obviously. I've never spoken to him. So feeling him, calling him Morgan would be weird. But then I can't, I don't, like calling him day you know mr day yeah yeah that would also be weird That's but also his name is short so i can just do morgan day every time morgan right, day. over but <laughs> <laughs> well i guess and one thing as we talk about his name um i don't know if you noticed but morgan is now an associate game director yeah got promoted which that. is which is awesome so if you guys don't know morgan was actually he was lead encounter designer um yeah. so he comes from the encounter design team same um, as Ian, but he also has been very good at actually communicating with the community. I think in a way that Ian has at times struggled with. I well, and I think the number one thing is like Morgan. It seems like a very likable dude. I've never met Morgan in por person, but um, but Morgan just seems like a very nice person. <laughs> like just a good dude to hang out with. Ian, a little bit more robotic, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice. Ian, website. Ian is less of a public speaker. Like, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that, but. I, I I feel like Ian is less of a less of a public speaker. Yeah. Um, well, cool. So some of the other highlights that I wanted to hit on was um, one was the and we actually didn't talk about this on Methods Kill, but they they ask about the bug that Method Method used yes. to kill Jailer Second. So if you guys aren't aware, um, there was a specific I believe it's a mage ability. Yes, it was um, the that Ventier could be used. mage ability. Mirrors of Torment. Actually, Kojiyama, uh, one of the rogue theory crafters is in my guild and he was talking with me about the implementation of that ability yeah and how they missed a spell flag that they oh. normally would use to flag silences that is probably the root cause of the issue where usually you know if you have an ability that causes a silence in addition to its normal effect like avenger shield does an interrupt and a silence the silence is a separate debuff this, the silence is tagged on the debuff itself as well as being an effect of having the debuff on you. Like, there's two separate flags. Mirrors of Torment's final mirror break um, is missing one of those flags. But it has the other one. And the speculation is that that caused it to not be like the boss to not be immune because of the way that they implement the boss immunity it was like looking for one flag and not the other gotcha um, and we actually do have confirmation that this does affect other bosses you can cancel the zymox intermission channel with this which is bad don't do that because <laughs> it means you have yeah. to do the main phase with all of the ads up and that's way harder um <laughs> interesting but you can you can cancel boss abilities with this because of that and that is what ended up happening on the method kill um yeah the, <laughs> once they figured it out like they they told other people about it i don't know what channels they used to do that but every kill since methods has used that button. yeah 
Yeah, basically the bug is you can use the Mirrors of Torment from Mages to interrupt the Jailer's healing in Phase 4 so that he does not heal to 24% or so. Basically, the Jailer, you get them get him to 10%, interrupt it, and he stays at 10%, and then you kill the Jailer. So um, they brought that up. Uh, they asked the question here, and I think um, they basically said, like, Morgan's response was sort of twofold. It was, Or no, for this one, it was basically they couldn't track down the bug. Um, they didn't yeah, they actually know exactly... They thought it was an RP timing thing where like it canceled it because the boss started walking. And if yeah. that's what you're looking for, you may not even be testing with a mage ability, right? Right. And so exactly. um there's no way they could reproduce the bug like that because that's not actually what was causing it. Yep, yeah, yeah. So that that was the issue. Um although Morgan did confirm that like mortal strike and other healing reduction abilities were supposed to work. Like yeah. they sort of, as encounter, he mentioned like as encounter designers, we sort of want to keep that flavor or those sort of utility spells in and where it makes sense. Right. Yeah. Um, and the idea of like your raid having some sort of mortal strike in it at 20 people on mythic, probably fair to say you're not going to miss out. Right. Yeah. So um, there's two 50% mortal strike debuffs, I believe. Uh, one of them is on a hunter pet. So if you have a hunter that's not marksmanship, or even if they are marksmanship, like it's a massive, like if you attributed all of the healing prevented to the player that prevented it, uh, right, yeah. like it would be massively better for your marksmanship hunter to pull out uh, a raptor or whatever pet does the portal strike effect. Uh, and then of course, arms warrior. There are other effects like uh, the, ty not tyrant, uh, guard for demonology warlocks has a 20 percent mortal strike debuff and there's a few others mm -hmm. between 20 and 50 percent but the of course where they heal that that size the 50 percent one is the one you want exactly exactly so uh that was that was an interesting little take on um on sort of their sort of view of like what happened and and he basically mentions too they're probably gonna hot fix it at some point um probably yeah. with a weekly reset but they'll be making changes to that um yeah moving forward so um, I don't know if there's sorry. anybody else at that point in progression on that fight right now. Actually, we could, we could pull that up and find out. Um, no idea. Go see. Poker. Progress. Like, there's six kills total. Uh, Aster got the sixth. Oh, no. Wait. Different Chinese kills. I don't even know anymore. But like BDGG uh, is not at that point in progression where they would have triggered the bug yet. Right. So if they if they do like fix the bug and then do a compensatory compensatory that say uh, <laughs> uh, nerf to the boss. And he actually he talked a little bit about the in intention of that final phase, which is very interesting to me. Because he basically said, like, the final phase was not intended to be, like, this really hard thing. Right, that, yeah. you know, was a wall in and of itself. It was supposed to be, like, you know, if you got there and you had your raid healthy and you had your defiles well and you, you know, were, were set up well when you entered phase four, you should be able to kill the boss. Which is an interesting right. bit of intention coming from, from him as an encounter designer. Um, and uh, this... Kind of, I guess, in contrast to something, well, in, in some ways, like the final platform of Sylvanas is like that, right? Where there's this right. big lull in the mechanics. You know, you get there, you have everybody alive, and you hit bloodlust, and you hit your potions, and everybody's just blasting damage for like 25 seconds before the next mechanic happens. Right, exactly. Yeah, and Denathrius, it is like the phase three of Denathrius is wild and super intense and everything. But then it has at the end this like 15, 20 second period that is the same, where there's just a lull in the mechanics happening you know push their cooldowns and just go nuts on the damage um right so that's that's yeah. kind of interesting yeah it might it might be a it, yeah it might be a design philosophy for them basically where they they take these sort of lull like getting to a point where you have a little bit of a lull a little bit of a chance to breathe because they they definitely talked he talked slightly about this right in passing on the qa question because they there was a question around like how to like what is it was it was like what does QA look like internally for bosses? So like how do you QA bosses internally? Um and uh and yeah, they talked about like feel a little bit, um, like timings, things like that. Um it seems like they don't actually test bosses as like a 20 person raid and, and going and do this, right? Um it seems more of like 
they're looking primarily for like larger bugs or larger just issues with the way the abilities are interacting yeah. and things like that. So I mean the whispers yeah. in the community forever have been basically that they go in with like you know, they have GM powers and they go in and they basically put the boss in a certain state where they can test an ability and just make mm-hmm. sure that the ability works, you know. They're not gonna be able to test every variation of every comp and every interaction. Right. Stuff like obviously the the mirrors of torment thing with the jailer is an example of where they can't catch everything. There's no exactly. way the timing on that is so specific. Um, yeah. Like Echo never had it happen despite having uh, a Venthyr Mage. You know, it, it's pure luck that Method happened to have it happen. Managed to I don't know if they isolated it or just got lucky that they had it happen twice in a row because that's where their mage was using their cooldowns. Right. Um, yeah. But then all you know the the guilds after that were like, well. This is how the boss works now. You know, we're going to do it. Exactly. Like so. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, cool. So I think the, the, um, the next sort of couple of sections, the highlight, they did ask a couple of questions around two things that are sort of somewhat related. The Great Vault um, and how they felt that's turning out. And then also the economy and the fact that legendary prices were extremely high. So they're sort of hand in hand. And this is why. So Morgan's sort of comment on the Great Vault was like, they basically want it to be like your weekly like reward for whatever content you have. So he's like the great vault in some form will probably continue on into the next expansion with a similar sort of like, Hey, do this X thing, this X activity so many times, and then you're going to reward at the end of the week. And so you will uh, probably see the same raid PVP mythic plus sort of view of it. Um, The one thing he did say, which I thought was interesting was they always want you to be able to get something out of that. Right. And so that's why they yeah. made the changes to sockets to add more materials where if you don't get an item from your vault, you still can get something else. So like his point, his like example is like, you may not get like the trinket you wanted this week or really the only thing you need is a trinket, but you'll get enough um, currency to maybe buy a socket, not a socket to your gear. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so yeah. So I think, you know, in that regard, probably see the great vault system. It seems like from a design perspective, that system stays around. Um, and so hand in hand there, we talked about always wanting rewards. It's like we, you know, but previous to this season, I guess you could call it, or this, this sort of patch, you know, some of the great, some of the times are great vaults worthless, right? Was, yeah, you didn't need Stygia. You didn't need, you know, other stuff. You might not get any gear you got. The, um, the, it, you had the option in, in 9.1 to get research, like fourth year research yeah. from the bad luck thing on the great vault except it didn't count for reputation so it didn't do the yeah. only thing you needed the research for exactly exactly um so yeah so that was that was sort of an interesting thing so i'm assuming great vault stays around i i don't mind it to be fair i think it's fine yeah. um, i think it's frustrating in some ways significantly better than the old mythic plus box right but as a raider, I would rather have the Mythic Plus box and have coins back. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. That's like, fair. Just thinking of stuff like um, the weapons from last year. You want a Jathus or a Vein Ripper or Sylvanas Daggers or the Hunter Bow. You know, you can use a coin. And that yeah. is maybe on average, it is worse than the Great Vault. I think it is. But yeah. it is player saying, I want this thing. I am going to do this to try and get this specific thing. Not to get a thing. I want this thing. And right. the vault doesn't have anything like that. Um, and the vault, like the loot pools are just so huge. You know? Yeah. It's true your odds vault, of yeah. seeing like there's what? 70 items that can come from a mythic plus vault or something like that and yeah so your odds of seeing like if you want a scale from hakar as a tank you're basically never going to see it from your vault i have not seen a single scale from the vault on any of my tanks that i consistently get two to three bro like boxes a week right the whole expansion never seen one and like uh, the that's where stuff like having a coin to say you know hey i want i want an item from hakar i want an item from painsmith would feel a lot better um so that's the one 
big gripe that I have with the Great Vault. Um, but honestly, like if they did something like there's a few different things they could do, right? Like it, they could give us coins that like guarantee that we see loot from that boss on the vault. Like if if I could use a coin on sure. on Painsmith, it's like okay, an item from Painsmith will show up in your vault. That would feel better. Yeah. It might still be the fucking ring every week, but it would feel better. Or or something like yeah. if if you didn't, you know, take an item from your vault, if your bad luck thing was literally just a coin, then you could go into into raid or into a dungeon and say like I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my coin on this boss, and it will it will give me an item from that boss instead of whatever was in my vault. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. some sort. Of, I was thinking more on like the currency side, like something you could use the currency for to yeah yeah, yeah. to increase I your luck. Yeah, they are so opposed to vendors. And the only things that I would want on the vendor are not the things that I feel like they would actually put on the vendor. Like, they could put all the non-special gear on the vendor and I would not care. It would be completely useless to me. It would right. need to be a vendor with, like, the Vein Rippers and the Jatuses and the and the Sylvanas weapons. And yeah, they'll, which I they'll never put those on a vendor. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, we could we could dream. Um but yeah, no, I think I think the yeah, vault wise seems like it'll be a system. We'll get the vault two dot or three dot whatever the number is at this point for the next expansion for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then the other thing they talked about a little bit was the economy situation around the fact that like legendaries were so the base items of legendaries were so expensive. And his I his feedback is indicated. Like, yeah, his his feedback is actually really interesting. And they he basically says they they missed the mark, particularly around. Like, so typically what will end up happening is whenever there's a new patch, um, like the base stuff, like the, um, the idea is like it becomes cheaper for the old stuff and the new stuff becomes the main point of putting money into, right? Except that that and, didn't happen. Exactly. And, and that's what he said. He's like, early on, they were like, cool. Like we would want people to sort of make, like the idea was, is we want to keep mats fairly low for like the rank ones because you can try whatever you want and you're not that far behind. And he's like, what we ended up, what ended up happening is we never reduced the material costs for rank two, three, and four as the patches came in. So they remained just expensive and very difficult to to gain and, and right. level up. So and he's like, like wearing a, a 190 legendary in 9.0 did not feel as bad as wearing a 190 legendary when right. you're eye level 250. Exactly. Exactly. So he's like, that was something that from like just a, just a like, yeah, uh, a, a system perspective, they missed the mark in terms of like giving catch up mechanics, really catch up. I guess the way the right way to say it, but giving a catch up method to the legendary like base item um, right. crafting, which they so, actually did add one. We didn't talk about yeah. this, but they did add one this week. There's an item on the vendor at Honored in Zareth Mortis. You buy it, it is 4,800 gold. And oh. you it's an optional reagent for crafting a legendary. You craft a rank one legendary and it promotes it to rank five. So you can get a 249 legendary. You know, you don't have to level the legendary crafting. You just, mm -hmm. you get your mats, you get your vendor item. And then, you know, for probably like 8K gold total, you can have a 249 legendary. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, I didn't realize. Sorry, I didn't even realize I came in. But yeah, um, it, it, but yeah. it snuck in on Friday. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, but, padding things in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he did, at least Morgan did uh, did acknowledge that. Yeah, the the legendary crafting stuff was just was way too expensive. I think, um, and they never did anything to change it. And they probably should have. So yeah, um, I mean, they really should have had something for. Like an item like this, an item like this, I think is yeah. great. I wish it were two fifty two or two sixty two, whatever the max of previous tier legendaries were, right? Instead of two forty nine, which is like one step down from that. But it's still like this is still like infinitely better than you know your options being yeah. spending like on area fifty two, which is a big server. Uh, your options, if you wanted a ring, were like to spend two thousand gold on a one ninety ring. Or thirty thousand gold on a two ten ring, or thirty thousand gold on a two twenty six ring, or two thirty thousand gold. Like it's just like thirty thousand gold all yeah. the way up, and then it jumps to ninety thousand gold once you get to the ones that people actually feel like, okay, I can, I can do this. Like so funny. Two forty nine rings were literally ninety thousand gold. Yeah. Um, now you know you can just like random crafters in trade check and make two forty nines for for under ten k. 
<laughs> that's yeah, that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, so he 100% touches on sort of that idea that uh, that yeah, like this stuff is um, that they, they, they missed the mark on the the legendary pieces. Um, cool. So, I, uh, so question for I, I you. Come to yeah. Question for you. If we have things like if they took the legendary system that we have now with like the catch up item and everything like into ten point oh, how would you feel about it? I'd hate it. You'd hate it. Yeah, I don't. I so I don't want like when you say like they basically just bring legendaries forward into ten point oh and we keep sort of the same thing. I I don't like like I will tell you as a misweaver the the legendaries themselves are always uninteresting. Like they're just they have not done a good legendary for a misweaver, like ever, I'd say. And maybe that's me just being about jaded. Sinister teachings is a good legendary. I it was I'm, I'm, it was I'm joking, but yeah. I mean like the I think the idea of Sinister Teachings was interesting. I think it just turned into like misweaver, like the idea of needing to have CDR to make a, another ability better was interesting. The problem was is their implementation of it made it very easy for us to just get max value out mm -hmm. of it by doing mm -hmm. nothing different than we typically would do so yeah so i mean i i don't i i hope we don't have legendaries in the next expansion i really don't i hope i to be fair like i am perfectly okay going back to an to an era where there is one legendary your entire raid group works together to get one person like i am perfectly fine with that type of system where like yeah. we go back to like valinar's like it's got to be a crafted one so like valinar shadow morn um and tish what are some of the other crafted ones? I don't the remember. the rogue daggers from from Canada. Rogue Zone. daggers, yeah, yeah. Not, I'm not, I'm not a fan of like, uh, glaives. Like, I don't, I'm not a fan yeah, of like dropped are, legendaries. But like Luke, anything that requires like your raid to work together to build something for one player, I'm, yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I hope hope to God, this whole crafting legendary crap is gone. I just hate it hate it so much <laughs> fair enough oh um, fair enough brewmaster has also not had a ton of like great legendaries there's a couple that just like it's basically the keg smash shoulders like it's yeah. the keg smash shoulders are just like both expansions it's been there it's just been great and that's the legendary you play um and then the other one is kind of whatever uh but you know interesting i I don't know how I feel about it. I like some of it, but also, yeah, it does add a lot of complexity for a lot of classes just not really getting anything from it. And in some yeah, classes, getting completely broken by it. Exactly. And it's, and it's an expansion-wide thing, so the idea of like having a set thing you will equip the entire expansion, I'm like not... I'm just not a fan. Like, I don't think I liked like Azerite, like the neck you got, or what yeah. was the item before the neck? The artifact you would, like. Well, the weapon was cool, I guess, but like even then, towards the end, got a little like, Ugh, I don't know if I want to keep dumping yeah. stuff into it. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's I don't, I'm not a fan of like, like slots on your gear, like not changing. I guess, yeah. and maybe I'm just and old and I fair. don't. That's fair. I don't know. I do think it's like, um, if they do bring this back, the cost has to be something that they fix. Oh yeah, yeah. like hundred percent. The legendaries have been too expensive all expansion long. They're still going to be too expensive for the max rank ones. Um, they they had to have done. They needed to do something about this in nine point not nine point two. But yeah, yeah. Um, but we got about five minutes left. We got a little bit about season four in Morgan Day's interview. We do, yeah. Um, there's one more thing I want to touch on before we get okay. to that, and this is just be very quick, and maybe we can spend some more time. They Morgan did talk slightly about some of the new systems they put in place with this raid which I thought were very interesting. Oh, so yeah, what the they actually stuff. did, the tuning stuff, yeah. So he spends actually probably one of the longer explanations and talks of a question, but um, the question seems very benign. It's like, what change you made this expansion as a whole team to better support the race for world first? Sort of the, the question I think that triggered this, but he talked about taking a lot of the scaling tech that they used to scale the overall zones. Basically you could level any zone and, and wherever the, that health would do it. Uh, and applying that to the raid where they could now say like, if this is the first boss health, then like we want to literally scale difficulty by health or damage that the bosses do like to the end boss. And so like yeah. the first boss feels like a first boss, the end boss feels like an end boss, and the ones so in between. They kind of they kind of set the difficulty curve for the raid. And then they move exactly. the whole thing as a unit up or down to try and tune the raid. Which actually, like, if they use this, I mean I 
they use this uh, sepulcher does kind of explain why we saw so many j bosses just eating 10% you know right they, just, they overshot the whole curve by 10% effectively um exactly whether that being due to overestimating how quickly people would get tier sets or underestimating how difficult these bosses would be without them um that's been a that's a very interesting perhaps consequence of it where like if they miss now on the position of that difficulty curve then the whole rate is off instead right. of you know a boss being off like I, well I, and, and that too and the other thing too is that you'd see we saw a lot of nerfs to bosses before teams even got there too which is sort yeah. of another idea of like them adjusting in it so i thought that was a, a cool point of it and then the other point too is i think they talked about they set up a more direct line of communication to the top guilds so in the past yeah. you'll hear like Scripe or probably Max say something about, oh, we emailed Blizzard and they told us this, right? And what they ended up doing was actually setting up a Discord where um, all the all the teams progressing world first were a part of it. So Blizzard basically talked to them as a unit. There was never this like one team has different information than another team. Right. It was sort of always, always sort of um always sort of just disseminated at the same time, which I think is always fair, which is good. Um and the final thing, sorry, final point we talked about season four was that. He talked about the ability for them to make changes quicker and faster because of COVID was actually a good thing. Like the fact that working from home was now like a normalized thing that people do. Right. It no longer required you to like wake up or like it's nine o'clock at night and like the EU is drive there, back into it's the over, office. Yeah, like drive back into the office, make a change at like midnight, one o'clock because EU found something when they started their raid day, right? Um, yeah. It's now like, hey, you can just open up your laptop at your house, make the change real quick and, and, yeah. and you're good. So yeah. Um, it also meant they were they had better support too from their other teams, so they would be able to better like if they had like a server problem, a server team they'd have to wake somebody up right. They had, they had did a little bit better there. So sorry, that was just quickly on yeah. sort of the communication. And yeah, stuff like that's, that. Um, I I forgot about the tuning thing. That's a really interesting thing for the like con contextualizing this tier. Like yeah, it's very easy to imagine them taking that difficulty curve and having a good difficulty curve. And like there's outliers mechanically like Halandris, where like this yeah. is just a very punishing boss. But then on the whole, they just had the, the difficulty curve set, you know, five to ten percent too high. And yeah. you know, needed to bring that dial that just the whole raid down a little bit. Which is honestly kind of what it felt like doing heroic. Right. And the difficulty of heroic is they just like obviously now we have four pieces of balls over, but um it it it's been um, much more difficult <laughs> than previous <laughs> tiers. No, that is for sure. That is for sure. So yeah, so that was the, um, I think that was the, the one issue part there. And then I guess the final sort of two, three minute thing we have here is they did talk a little bit about season four um, coming up. And basically a couple things, no real new information about season four. I think some, some highlights are they're going to, tier sets are not going anywhere in season four. There won't be like a new thing to to collect. Also, gems, sanctum of domination, gems are not coming back. We will not have to deal with those. So we're thinking tier sets will, will stay around for season four. Yep. Um, and also gave sort of a timeline, which very vague timeline, but basically I think the um uh, I forget the gentleman, the interviewer, like ask, are we looking at like is this like a typical six to nine month patch? And Morgan basically was like, Yeah, that's what we're shooting for. Like, no hard set dates yet but we can sort of infer from his response that you know september ish time frame this year will be the start of season four i would be very happy if they just released 9.2.5 before that and then they gave us like 9.2.8 or whatever for the actual season four stuff just so that we could get cross faction rating sooner yeah um, that's true that, that, would that would be that would be i would love to get that in sooner um i'm actually in the process of setting up our alliance guild um we're gonna have things to figure out on the warcraft log side to figure out how to support people being <laughs> in two separate guilds for the purposes of tracking progress and things because you're gonna end up in situations where like there's 11 people on horde and nine people on alliance and that, that is just like which, which you, guild gets how do you track that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um so sorry. yeah it's it's i i'm very excited about the cross faction rating thing um and i know a lot of people in my guild are like yes i get to play you know the alliance race that i played for you know 15 years and then had to swap horde to actually continue rating 
Um, so there's just a lot yeah. of excitement around that. And I really hope that they get that out sooner rather than. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that goes. But um, but yeah, no, I think that was the final point is that, um, you know, that this season should be sometime this fall with uh, with it'll be interesting to see how long they're they're tracking season four to to last. Right. Because we're going to going into yeah. an expansion announcement here in April. Like you would you would think. They'd want to get the expansion out within the next year. Yeah. Right. Like so like if you do it that way, then. In another year, we'll see. Like next spring, we'll see. So this in, uh... patch came out at the beginning of March, effectively, like March first. So six months from then, if they're looking at six months for a season length, right? We're going yeah. from month three to month length. So September, like you said, beginning yep. of September. Another six months from that would be, of course, next March. Um, oh, that's actually pretty. Yeah, that's true. That wouldn't be too bad, timeline wise. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so six months of season four, which I don't like. It depends on what season four exactly is, but yeah, um, it might not hold people's attention. Yeah. We might still I mean, end up with really, that whole. I, it is encouraging to me that he commented that they're still figuring out the raid difficulties and everything for this because, like, right? I, I I mentioned this last week. I don't think it's gonna land super well if people are like coming off of you know mythic, sepulcher progression, and jumping. They're not gonna want to jump immediately into mythic whatever season four progression yeah um, oh yeah exactly so i don't know if maybe it would be like a staggered release where they release heroic for like a month or two and then they release mythic or if they just tune it differently to compensate for the fact that you know we still have mythic mythic sepulchre through right exactly yeah yeah no for sure it'll be yeah yeah more info on season four probably needed but it sounds like yeah we're looking at you know, at least another six months of Sepulcher and then whatever season four is before the next expansion, which yeah. which will be a nice breakup, regardless of what exactly it is. It'll be something new so we don't end it's up with a year than long. just 12 months of Sepulcher, right? Like, yeah, no, yeah. It's Believe me, I, good. one of the only times I've ever quit WoW for more than a couple, a couple weeks or, you know, missed a couple weeks of WoW was WAD and I quit for yeah. like four months. I stopped. Like, I, it's like, I can't, like HFC I can't zone in and kill, yeah, Garage months. for like, yeah, I can't kill Garage for the twelfth time. <laughs> yeah, or like thirtieth time, right? Like I can't do it. So, yeah. yeah uh, well, cool. I think that's that's it then. I think that's it for our show today. Yeah. So thank you all for watching and or listening. As I mentioned, this Morgan Day interview, there's a lot more details. You can get the link from the show notes. There's a link up on Wowhead that will also be in the show notes with the highlights of it. Um, and I would highly recommend going and actually listening to that. Um, and of course, if you enjoyed this podcast and you want to support it and the other work that we do over on the Geek of Serenity, you could do that by going over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Geek of Serenity. And then of course, come and join the Discord. Uh, it is back to its normal state now after the April 1st shenanigans. <laughs> um, and so That's the lounges are path. all back to their old names and Brew Lounge is of course still the best lounge. Uh, but thank you all for listening. We will see you next week. Bye.